This is KVU News Daybreak. It's a muggy start here Wednesday morning with lots of heat on the way. We'll talk about that plus a change for the better coming up. Flames shoot out the windows of a strip mall. We'll have a live report from the scene. New changes at a hotel chain could help you in an emergency. Which hotel is using Carrie's law before the law is even passed? Good morning and thank you so much for watching KV News Daybreak at 5 a.m. I'm Brian May. And I'm Tina Shively in for Yvonne Nava. It is Wednesday, September 10th. Fire crews on the scene of a fire that broke out this morning in a strip mall. Daybreak's Jade Mingus is live from Pond Springs Road now, not far from 183 in Northwest Austin. Jade, what can you tell us? Well, good morning, Tina and Brian. This fire started at 3.30 a.m. A witness says that they saw flames shooting from the window and called 911. You can see most of the damage is contained to the front office, and fire investigators just told us the cause of this fire is electrical. 32 firefighters responded with seven engines, knocked down the fire in less than an hour. It broke out in the front office of the Strip Center in a business. What fire investigators tell us is the Pat Lee Group. The business distributes holistic items, including including essential oils and cleanses. An auto repair shop is nearby, but crews contained the flames before it spread, and the fire left behind lots of damage, charring the front of the building, but no word yet on the cost of that damage. But crews are staying on the scene, looking for more clues and making sure that this fire does not flare up again. Reporting live in Northwest Austin, Jade Mingus, KVU News Daybreak. Thank you, Jade. Police are looking for the driver of a truck who left the scene of an accident. Police say a pickup sideswiped a semi as it tried to pass just before three this morning. That pickup spun out, crashed into the median, and then ended up in the passing lane of northbound I-35 near 45th Street. Officers say the driver then ran away and simply left this truck on the interstate. Wooden debris from the back of that truck was also scattered across I-35, and that temporarily shut down both the north and southbound lanes. That semi-truck had minor damage. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to check in with Shelly Bonner. She's got her eyes on the roads, but first, let's talk about the weather. Yesterday was hot, today was hot, but as we were told yesterday, this weekend might actually be kind of nice. I'm really looking forward to that. Nice and well. maybe some rain as well. Yeah. Take away all the thunder from uh, meteorologists when they buy or no. Oh, that's okay. There will be plenty of thunder coming. I right. think I'm no. not too worried about it. Mother Nature will be providing that. And you're right. Yeah, the temperatures are going to be changing soon, but we've got to still get through about two hot days. Two really hot days, actually. In fact, it's even very warm starting out this morning. Take a look outside 77 right now in Austin, Georgetown, 78 in Thorndale. We're at 78 in LaGrange, the cool temperature on the map, 73 in Blanco. That's it. The rest of us dealing with the heat, and it's even warm there. So it's going to be a very muggy start when you head out this morning. As soon as you step out your door, you'll feel it, that humid air. But that's what's going to help us get some rain later on in the week. 89 degrees by noontime and lots of sunshine expected later uh, today. 99 degrees for the high. Guys, the heat index closer to 105 later this afternoon in some spots. And that wind from the south will be quite breezy, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That's all as the next system begins to approach. I'll tell you when it looks like that front gets here and why you might need your umbrella, not just for Friday, but into next week, too. Looking forward to those cooler temperatures. Right? As am I. Thank you, Lene. Thank you, Lene. Well, classes will start at their normal time today at Fredericksburg High School after the school received two bomb threats yesterday. After that first threat, students were evacuated. No bomb was found, so then they returned to class. And just 10 minutes later, another threat was called in, so the school canceled classes for the rest of the day. Police and dogs searched the campus, but no suspicious devices were found. An update to bring you now about dialing 911 from hotels. Marriott Corporation has mandated that all of their hotels be carry law compliant. That means they're eliminating the prefix number 9. They'll now provide so-called no 9 needed direct dialing to 911. That law was started by the family of Carrie Hunt. This woman, she was attacked in her hotel room in East Texas. Her 9-year-old daughter tried calling police but she couldn't get through without dialing nine first. She didn't know she had to dial nine first. Carrie's father was at a meeting in Austin last night. He spoke out about the importance of being able to directly call 911 in hotel, school, office, or hospital. More questions than answers this daybreak as a woman says she witnessed police fatally shoot her roommate. The Travis County Sheriff's Office says a team of officers went to arrest 24-year-old Tyler Carraway on Monday in connection with a bank robbery when the shooting occurred. 
They saw him pull up to his home on May Place near I-35 and Howard Lane. Then shots were fired. It's still unclear who fired first or if Caraway even had a weapon. The sheriff's office says they also cannot confirm if he ever stepped out of the SUV. His roommate says she sat in the passenger seat next to him when she heard the gunshots. About 20 shots were fired and then Tyler's head hit my lap and blood went everywhere and they continued firing and at that point I was concerned for my safety. The sheriff's office did confirm Schoonover witnessed the shooting. They also tell us they believe the shots fired came from the Austin and Round Rock officers. There's no dash cam video since the task force uses an undercover vehicle. Two veteran Austin police commanders are under internal affairs investigations, one for comments he made about an officer's actions in a high profile case. The first case involves Commander Steve Deaton and what he said about another case in front of other officers. That case about an officer chasing down a robbery suspect while off duty and persisting in police action even after uniformed officers showed up. Detectives claim he supported that officer. The other case involves Commander Donald Baker. He's accused of speaking to an unidentified officer about a personnel matter involving her outside of the presence of their bosses. He could face punishment for insubordination. Now, the police union says these two commanders are simply targets of retaliation by Department Brass, one for simply disagreeing with the boss. The family of a nine-year-old boy struck by lightning is suing the Lake Travis Youth Association, Youth Soccer Association, for $10 million. Alexis Herman now has permanent brain damage. He can't talk, hear, or move and will need around-the-clock care for the rest of his life. The lawsuit claims the association was negligent and that the weather wasn't on the minds of staff. Their son was a happy-go-lucky kid, and then he's now reduced to, you know, basically in bed, not moving, not communicating. Now, an anonymous couple is helping the family by donating $10 for every person who takes 10 minutes to learn hands-only CPR. They pledge to give at least $1,000. The industry standard is that a board member is on the scene for every practice or game whose job is to monitor the weather there. Lightning can travel sideways up to 10 miles, and at least 10% of lightning occurs without visible clouds in the sky. In our sound off this morning, we'd like to know your opinion on this story and this lawsuit. Do you think the Youth Association needs to pay or does the responsibility lie with someone else? Drissa writes, while this event is tragic, no one could have predicted this would happen. It was an act of nature and thunderstorms flare up out of nowhere and sometimes with little warning. The Youth Soccer Association was not malicious nor negligent in this case. It is a frivolous lawsuit. That's her opinion. And Mike writes, that seems to be today's mentality. It's everyone else's job to raise, teach, and take care of the kids. You can share your thoughts, too. Just log on to the Facebook page, the KVU Insider page, and we'll have more comments later on here on Daybreak. It is 5.08 now. President Barack Obama will make his case tonight to broaden the fight against ISIS in the Middle East. He's keeping congressional leaders in the loop as he proposes immediate military training for Syrian rebels. ABC's Taman Bradley has the very latest. Tonight, a rare primetime address by President Obama to lay out his strategy for battling ISIS. Administration officials say the president wants Congress to sign off on a program to arm and train Syrian rebels who would take the fight directly to the Sunni militant group. <laughs> Yesterday at the White House, Mr. Obama made his case to House and Senate leaders. President Obama is also considering an even more aggressive campaign of U.S. airstrikes against ISIS, perhaps even expanding them into Syria. It appears the president is ready to move forward with this broader military effort without seeking congressional authorization. But some Republicans want a vote. The view of myself and most of my members is the president should be seeking congressional approval, period, for, for whatever he decides. Uh, to do. The president's speech on the eve of the 9-11 anniversary comes as the public becomes increasingly worried about the threat posed by ISIS. The terror group is now trying to recruit young women using social media and online videos like this. The advice that uh, I have for the sisters. Sources say as many as a dozen young American women have tried to join Islamic radicals in Syria. I think it's very possible that as they train women that you could see them as suicide bombers. Also part of the president's strategy, seeking commitments from U.S. allies around the world to help defeat ISIS. Tamon Bradley, ABC News, Washington.
Tamon, thanks. All Apple everything. Yeah. You can expect more than a, <laughs> a new iPhone to hit stores soon. Plus how they're changing the way you might pay for things coming up. And hoping to break records. Thousands of these guys fans, Aggie fans, revving up A&M QB Kenny Hill for this weekend's game against Rice. It's a big one. Here's a look outside at 5, almost 5 on this hump day Wednesday morning. Traffic moving smoothly in this area. Had some issues earlier this morning and Shelly Bonner will join us in just a bit with a look at traffic. Lene Meyer is here as well. She's got her eyes on the forecast. We've got you covered this morning here on Daybreak. Stay with us.